There we go. Welcome everyone to Business English. We will start with some introductions. Hi, I'm Ariella Knight. I am the founder and CEO of the American Institute. We are an English school and a cultural exchange center based here in Algiers. I am from Boston. I went to school in Colorado and in Washington, DC. And then I moved to Algeria in 2018 as an English teacher. My background is in oops, program management, business consulting, and English teaching. So I am very excited to combine all of these interests to talk to you tonight about business English. All right, a quick outline of the entire class that we're doing before we dive into tonight's topic. This is an online business English class. They take place every Tuesday evening from eight o'clock to 9.30. We have eight weeks total, so there are eight sessions and they're always free to attend. This is a series sponsored by the U.S. Embassy's American Cultural Center, the ACCA. Here is the program. So actually we are just, oh, I keep going ahead. We are just over halfway through. Uh, last week we talked about interviewing and we spent the first few weeks going over resumes, cover letters, et cetera. Now we are on networking and elevator speeches. A few notes before we start today's class. As a reminder, this is a B2 level class. So it is at the advanced intermediate level. I will be speaking at the speed and difficulty level of advanced intermediate, as will my panelists. Today we have some very exciting special guests. So we will be speaking at the level of B2. If anyone who's here is below that level, you are welcome to join. However, you might not catch everything. So I'm happy to tell you that the sessions will be recorded and you can watch them later. We have a few features in Zoom that we can use. I see so many of you in the chat already uh, chatting to each other and talking, that's perfect. The chat is just for that, responding to my questions, encouraging each other, um, speaking with each other, I'll keep an eye on the chat, but I might not catch everything. Then we have a feature called Q&A. This is where you can ask questions related to the class. This is a great place to ask questions for both myself and the ACCA team to respond to. If you ask a question in the chat, it will get lost. So your questions should go to Q&A. Um, some common questions that we get is there a certificate? No, there is not. Is the class recorded? Yes, it is. The class is recorded and you can view it later on YouTube. How to participate with Mike. So at some points, and tonight we actually have, I hope a very exciting part of this will be um, participation with audio. So we will ask you guys to uh, raise your hand, meaning click on the button that says raised hand. Um, and you can unmute your microphone and speak with us all. And I'll say quickly, when you participate with Mike, there's no video. So anyone who doesn't want to be on video, no worries. There's no video. It's just participation with audio. Some class rules. We ask for respect and civility in the chat and when you're invited to speak on audio respectful engagement on social media when we have homework, and to avoid swearing, profanity, or discussion of irrelevant topics, either in the chat, social media, or on audio. Um, and last of all, being open-minded to having fun and being positive. Is everything okay? Is everyone good to continue? Let me check the recordings. Oh, sorry, not the recordings, the Q&A. I see people are asking questions of where to view the previous sessions. You can find them on the U.S. Embassy YouTube page. The U.S. Embassy YouTube page. That is where you can find these. This will be recorded and posted in about, well, maybe tomorrow it will be posted, I'll say. Okay, let's get started. As you know, if you've been with me before, you know I like my dog pictures. 
So today's topic is networking. We will do an overview of networking. We will do networking in Algeria with a special guest, and then we will have time for your questions. So I please ask you now to write down your questions about networking because we will have a moment for you to raise your hand and ask us those questions. Then we move on to elevator speeches. We will do an overview of what is an elevator speech, and then we will practice elevator speeches where I hope you all will be joining us to share your elevator speech. This will make sense later once we've talked about what it is. And then of course we end with the idiom of the week. Before we begin, or rather as an opener, I have a question for you guys. This is my first question that I want to see your answers in the chat. Tell me in the chat, what does this idiom mean? No man is an island. What do you think it means? Tell me in the chat, type to me. No man is an island. What does this mean? No man is powerful. People must interact with each other. A man can't know everything. You need connections. We need community. Nobody is perfect. No one can work alone. People are naturally sociable. People are living together. Louis Armstrong. No one knows everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People can't live isolated. Very good. No one is alone and isolated. No one is truly self-sufficient. Good, interesting. People are not isolated. Nobody's perfect. No one is self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We work with groups, not alone. Very interesting, okay. No one can live isolated without communication with others. Okay, very good. I think you guys get this idiom. We use this in English to say, no one is truly self-sufficient. No one is truly self-sufficient. Everyone must rely on the company and comfort of others in order to thrive. We have this picture, it's of a sad man. He's sitting on the island showing you that everyone needs support in order to move forward. This will be very important for us and for our topic today, because we are talking about networking and relying on our connections or relationships with others to help us reach our goals. This is why we will consider at the beginning this idiom, no man is an island. We cannot and we should not go it alone. So I have my first poll for you guys. This is a poll about networking. Emily, can you open the poll please? Okay, you should have a poll in front of you. And the question is, have you networked before? Have you networked before in your life? Yes, a few times. Yes, a lot of times. No, or I'm not sure. And if you don't know what this means, networked before, then you can answer, I'm not sure. That's perfectly fine. We'll wait for everybody to answer. That's fine, you guys can answer. I'm not sure that's good. That's a perfectly valid answer and hopefully at the end of this, we'll have more clarity on what it means to network. All right, here we go. Let's get our answers. Okay, so about 20% of you said no. I have not networked before. That's perfectly fine. You're in the right place to learn about networking. Let's see, 37% uh, have networked a few times. 
22% have networked a lot of times, and 22% said, I'm not sure. So I think in total, we see about around 60% have networked, whether a few times or a lot of times. I'm hoping to give you a little presentation about what networking is, and then we'll do this poll again and see what you say. All right, so my next question. Oh, geez, giving away the answer. Um, what is networking? For those of you who know, for those of you who have networked, what is networking? Tell me in the chat, what is networking? Making connections, making connections in your field, building relationships, sharing different ideas, making relationships, building relationships, building professional relationships, building links, communication, sharing information, interacting with others, relationships in your domain, mm -hmm. exchanging information, making connections with others, talking, sharing different ideas, being open-minded, building connections with others. Very good, creating links, working with each other gathering professionals around a common goal, getting in touch and building professional relationships, interacting with others to share information, establishing relationships with people in the same field. Good, all right, these are great answers, you guys. I have here two different definitions of networking. The first one, networking is the exchange of information and ideas among people with a common profession or special interest, usually in an informal social setting. All right, so, okay, I'll read the second one. The second one is meeting and forming contacts with other people in your field of business. So what we see is that we're talking about common profession, field of business. So we're talking about making contacts, speaking with, building relationships with people in the same field of business as you. And interestingly enough, in the first one, they clarify that this is usually in an informal social setting. So we're not just talking about formal uh, business conversations. We're also including informal settings. Number two, why is networking important? Muhammad has a very nice answer for us. Networking is about forming and nurturing mutually beneficial relationships. I think that's exactly true. All right, why is networking important? To exchange ideas, to open minds, to get good connections for a job so no one becomes an island. Thank you, Bilal, I agree. To improve business, learning, exchanging, exchanging ideas and experiences, getting information, helping each other, improving each other, knowledge learning, exchanging ideas, to sell yourself, interesting, we'll talk about that later. Okay, learning, becoming more creative, meeting people, guiding each other, mm -hmm. to progress as an individual and as a society, making contacts for knowledge exchange, giving and getting useful ideas and information. All right, beautiful. This is great, you guys, developing your personality. Okay, interesting. Gain new experiences and exchange, new ideas. Okay, so I have here, networking has many benefits, many benefits, including some personal benefits. These are the top four benefits when we're talking about your professional career. Number one, and the biggest one that people talk about when they talk about networking is going to be about increasing your contacts in your field. I put a little arrow here because this is directly related to future opportunities. Increasing your contacts so that you know about new jobs or increasing your contacts 
so that when a job is open, you have a contact in the company that you can talk to. That's the biggest thing we talk about when we talk about networking, knowing people so that you can get good or better jobs in the future. However, there are many other reasons networking is valuable, including, and I was really happy to see this in the chat, talking about exchanging information and ideas. It's an opportunity to learn from other people in the same field as you, to debate, to discuss um, the latest technologies or the latest developments in your field. So networking in and of itself is also an opportunity for learning, and that can be the entire goal. Number three, this is really about the relationship component of networking. You can discuss challenges, receive support and advice from people that you network with, especially someone who's maybe a little bit further along in the field. Maybe they've been working for two years and you're just entering. Well, they have two years experience. They can give you valuable advice about the career that you're about to start. They can give you recommendations. They can tell you some tips to avoid challenges that they face. Not connected to future jobs, but really connected to helping advise you on your career path. The fourth one, the last one, this really gets to the personal side of things. When you network, when you push yourself to network and you learn to be comfortable with networking, you are also developing your self-confidence and your social skills. You become accustomed to speaking with and building relationships with people in a professional way. This has many benefits for self-confidence, both in the professional and personal life as well as social skills that will definitely help you as you build your career. Question number three, when does networking happen? In what environments? Are we networking at the beach? Are we networking on the airplane? When does networking happen? I guess maybe I should say when and where. Everywhere, career fairs, conferences, LinkedIn, social media, everywhere, work, school, pretty much everywhere, university, clubs, common areas, social media, everywhere, lunch breaks, everywhere. I like it. A lot of people are saying everywhere. Mm -hmm. Jobs, administrations, every time and everywhere. Whenever you have the chance, online and offline. It doesn't matter where, workplaces, internet, social media, Zoom, school, online jobs, exhibitions. ACCA, mm hmm All right, beautiful. I think you guys got all of them. The answer is all of the time. Also, I should say everywhere because I sort of asked when and where. So all of the time and everywhere, you are completely correct. You can network at any moment because networking is simply about speaking with someone, speaking with someone about who you are and your professional goals. This can happen at basically any scenario, whether you're in a family environment, a work environment, a casual environment. I have here a couple of examples for us. Some examples of networking that you might not think of as networking. Number one, you're attending an event and you speak with other attendees afterwards. I put this up here because I think some people think they're only networking when they speak with the panelists or the speakers. But the other people in the audience with you, just exchanging with them is actually networking. You have someone with a common interest as you attending the same event, possibly working in a very related field. That's a great contact to make, networking. Number two. When a friend introduces you to a new friend. I don't know if this has happened to any of you, but you're meeting a friend and they say, hey, can I bring my, my friend, you know, John with me? They bring John and you meet them. It's a very casual setting. You're having a coffee or you're going for a walk together and you explain what you're doing. John says, oh, that's crazy. I'm working in a really similar field. This is really interesting. Let's exchange information. I wanna to talk to you about this further. It's a casual friend setting and you're networking, but you don't think of it as a special skill or a different environment or a different side of yourself. It's simply introducing yourself and clearly stating 
what you're working on, and what your professional goals are. Another one, engaging with people in your field on LinkedIn in the comments section of posts. I'm trying to add ones that you wouldn't necessarily think of. So we do think of exchanging in LinkedIn via direct messages as networking. This is true. However, people can't often respond to messages. There's so many of them. If they've never met you, it's not likely they can respond. But engaging with them on their post publicly, that could be quite interesting. If someone posts an article with their opinion and you respond in a comment, respectful, engaging, um, either agreeing or adding additional commentary, it puts your name on the map. It's having a conversation online with someone. This can also happen on Facebook. This is absolutely networking. And remember, it's professional. So we're engaging professionally, respectfully. Another one, going to coffee with your coworkers and telling them about your career goals. You can network with people who you already know. Your coworkers may be people that you sit next to every day, but do they know that in five years from now, you're hoping to open your own boulangerie? Probably not. Sit with them, talk to them. You never know who's in someone's network. Explain to people where you're going. Explain to people what you're interested in so that they can think, ah, oh, who do I know that you should talk to? Take time to network with people who are already in your contacts. Sometimes we focus so much on people that we don't know. Oh, if only I could talk to him, I could really get an amazing answer, an amazing connection, that we, we forget to look, to look at or to consider the people who we already interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. We don't think of them as someone to, sh to share our career goals with. All right, next we have the interview process for an internship or job. I added this one because I have a little story about this. Uh, I was interviewing recently for a position and I had a great experience with someone who was interviewing, really a wonderful candidate. Unfortunately, there was a better candidate. So this candidate, the second choice, didn't get the job. However, I really enjoyed my experience with them. I found it enriching, I had a super high opinion of them, and so when I had a good friend at another company say to me, you know, I'm really looking to hire someone with this skill, this skill, and this skill, I referred my candidate to another job. So when you're applying to a job, even if you don't get the position, you are still making a contact. You're still meeting someone, you're still introducing yourself and creating a relationship. And if you're planning on remaining in that field, it's a very valuable connection to have. There's always a good reason to end on a positive note. When you don't get the job, you, you say thank you for your time. Um, you never know where those connections can lead you down the road. And again, this goes back to the point that every environment or every opportunity is also a networking opportunity. The last one, chatting with your friends, family members about your goals over lunch. Your, your friend invites you over for, I don't know, maybe a Friday couscous. You go over, you're talking, you meet her uncle, you say, yeah, I work in marketing or I'm looking for a job in marketing. And he says, oh, well, actually, I know a company hiring someone in marketing, et cetera. This is a great way to network. Really, you're introducing yourself, you're showing that you're nice, you're friendly, uh, you're professional, you can present yourself well. And it sends out a notice. I'm looking for opportunities. The more people who know that, the more opportunities you can find. All right, so now that we know that networking happens everywhere and at every time, I would like to ask you a similar, well, it's the same question. Emily, can you do the second poll, please? Okay. So it's the same question, you guys. But now that we've explained networking, how it can be talking with a friend's family, how it can be talking with your coworkers, exchanging in the comment section on social media, I wanna ask you again, have you networked before? We can say no, even after this, I think, no, actually, I've really never done any of this. Yes, a few times, yes, a lot of times, or maybe still you're not sure, maybe you still need to consider it. But I'm curious to see, with this new definition, how many of the answers shift?
All right. We'll wait for Emily to close the poll. This is what we are actually doing, says someone. That's true. We're, we're currently engaging with each other. Okay. So we have 12% said no. That's interesting. That's a drop of 10%. So now only 12% with this new definition say they've never networked. And only 4% are not sure. Down from much more than that. I'm forgetting the number. And we're up to 35% have networked a few times. And almost 50% have networked a lot of times. And I know over time that all of you are gonna end up in the category of yes, a lot of times, because networking is not something rare and it's not something technical. It's really about talking and exchanging with other people about your professional goals. Let's continue. Speed things up so we can get our wonderful guest out here soon. Um, question four, do you need work experience in order to network? Do you need work experience in order to network? I see lots of no's. I see a yes. I see not really. Absolutely no. No. To some extent, yes. It's better, not necessarily. In some cases, yes. Of course not. We need social skills a little bit, maybe. Not really, absolutely, not necessarily. But the majority is no. All right, no. The answer is no. You do not need work experience in order to network. What you do need is to be able to present yourself and explain your professional goals. With work experience or no work experience, you can still present yourself and explain your professional goals. This is what you need to network. This is what we're gonna talk about today. All right, another question. What is the difference between networking and nepotism? What does it mean, nepotism? Someone in the chat. I think we call this marifa. Favoritism. That's right, favoritism. Yep, we're talking about the difference between networking and marifa. Tell me, what is the difference? Are they the same thing? What is the difference? Ethics. Hmm. Someone says ethics are different. Mm -hmm. Someone says it's not the same thing. Okay, tell me why is it not the same thing? Marifa is illegal. Nepotism kills networking. Interesting. One is illegal. Mm -hmm. We have a conversation around, around ethics that I'm interested in. Nepotism is when they do you a favor or a personal benefit, but networking is just communication. The first is building relations, but the other is taking what you don't deserve. Ethical versus unethical. Mm -hmm. Someone says we use our network for Marifa, but I question, do we also use our network for networking? Uh -huh. Nepotism means we help our relatives only. Networking, we can help anybody. Mm-hmm. Networking is when you get a job because you know someone. Oh, sorry, nepotism is when you got a job because you know someone. Mm -hmm. Very good. Nepotism is bad. Networking is legal. Nepotism can speed up networking. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Networking is when you do it on your own. Networking is available to everyone. Mm -hmm. Nepotism is related to not deserving the position. They're completely different. Mm -hmm. Networking is more formal. Networking can help everybody. Yeah, very good. You see, this is a very important distinction because sometimes when we talk about networking, people instantly think nepotism. They say, oh, networking's not for me. I don't have the right name. 
networking will never work for me. I don't come from the right family. So this is why we talk about this at the beginning, because networking and nepotism have one thing in common, but otherwise are completely, in, completely different. What they have in common, they are both about using contacts to help get jobs, in part, because we mentioned networking also has other amazing benefits for advice, information, self-confidence. Okay, but halas, they do both involve using contacts to get jobs. This is a fact. And in both networking and nepotism, your friends and family can play a big role. In networking, starting with your friends and family and getting their recommendations is absolutely normal and encouraged because we start with our existing networks. However, as many of you said, anybody can network. In fact, everybody should network. You do not need a specific name or a specific family background to network or to benefit from networking. Networking means reaching out to people who can potentially guide you towards your goals. Nepotism means your connections favor you in hiring decisions. So nepotism is only focused on who gets the job. It's not about advice and support. It's not about exchanging ideas, having contacts for years to come, creating community. It's just about favoring you for the position, not even considering qualifications. Networking is all about building relationships. It's all about communication, long-term contacts, people guiding you. They, are, they have some similarities, but they are very different. I see someone just said, networking doesn't exist in Algeria. And I think I'm going to use that to cue in Selma to talk to us. Oh, let's come back to this part because I want to just go right into Selma's presentation right now. Selma, does networking exist in Algeria? <laughs> of course it exists in Algeria, my dear. I guess like I found different <laughs> jobs because of networking. I mean, networking is a gift and everyone should be able to know how to network. Thank you, Ariella, for choosing this great topic. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you today. Great presentation, Ariella, and introduction. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Um, okay, so my name is Selma. If we can go to the next slide, Ariella, please. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just introduce myself. So, yeah. I didn't, Selma, I'm sorry, I didn't tell everyone. I've been hinting that we have a guest, but everybody, I'm officially introducing Selma Muguj, who will be presenting to you an amazing presentation on networking in Algeria. Okay, take it away, Selma. Thank you so much, Ariel. I just need you to, you know, change the slides when I tell you. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, I'm so happy to be here with you today. So uh, my name is Salma Mouloud and I work as a relationship associate for a multinational company, which means that I do networking all the time and it's very important in my daily work in order to grow the business, actually. So I have a master's degree in biology from Algeria and I have also studied leadership and management management in the US. I have experience in program and relationship management, marketing, finance, banking, training, and teaching. And I also enjoy volunteering. So I, I co-founded the Algerian Youth Voices, which is the first online audio broadcasting in English in Algeria. And I founded also another program called Community Leadership Algeria, which is a leadership and entrepreneurship program for youth. I believe that uh, investing in youth and women is investing in a sustainable community. So um, this is a brief introduction about myself. Um, to start, I would like to ask you a question as Ariella always does. So you can answer the question in the chat. Um, Ariella, can we go to the slide, please? <clears throat> Thank you, Ariella. So guys, I want to ask you, when you go to an event, do you approach new people or do you stay in your comfort zone? Thank you. Nice to see you too. So tell me, you approach, Shema. Good. You do? It depends. Comfort zone. 
comfort zone. You stay with your people. It depends. Comfort zone. I stay shy. Definitely. Yes. I do my best. I approach. That's good. I think we should have maybe done a poll so we can see a percentage. So I can see different answers. Some of you may be scared to approach people. Others can take the lead and approach people. Comfort zone. But I see a lot of comfort zone. Okay, if you see people are open minded. Okay, actually, I asked this question because I go to a lot of events and I work with a lot of youth. And in Algeria, I see when we are at an event, we have a lot of youth who stay with their group. They don't go out and ask and say, Hi, how are you? My name is Selma and I work at this company and I'm happy to be here. Do you like the weather? Do you like the food? And they start small chat they don't do that they just stay with their group taking selfies and pictures and they don't take benefit of the event or anything so that's why i wanted to talk about this so and others so many people believe that networking during a job search means calling everyone and asking them for a job People associate sometimes networking with being pushy and some people tend to hide away from networking because they are afraid to approach others and because maybe they don't want to be uh, labeled to be a type of a pushy person looking for a job. Uh, but networking is like a two-way street. So it is a way to get to know people better and also finding ways um, where you might be able to help others and they help you in return. So for me, network, so I, you have seen the definition of networking with Ariella, but I wanted to share my insight. So for me, networking is using a personal relationship that people have with one another to increase your exposure, whether to information or to opportunity and even to make friendship sometimes. So it's not only about jobs. So as Ariella said, um, networking can happen anytime, anywhere. Actually, it is now happening in this Zoom chat. You're attending Ariella's classes, and I'm sure you are here weekly, and maybe you're recognizing some people from their nicknames. Maybe you're adding each other on social med media. You're already doing networking. This is networking. Actually, events and gatherings uh, in general, are a great opportunity to present yourself, make new connections, and even find yourself a new job. And also research shows that a large number of people found their jobs through networking. You say that it doesn't exist in Algeria, but it does exist, and it's not Marifa. So uh, let's talk more about networking. So actually, good networkers can establish great relationships develop them and you know they um they have this kind of thing to establish a credibility to share their information and knowledge and to become a successful networker you should follow and believe that everyone has something to learn and gain. So you're not there to be taking information only or taking an opportunity, but you have also to be a giver. What you need to show, show them what you can offer and in return, and this is important. So uh, I have prepared actually for you some tips in order to get better at networking. So if Ariella can maybe share with us the next uh, slide, I don't know if it, Okay, exactly. So people are agreeing with what, I, what I'm saying. That's good. So, Selma. Yeah, I know. We can talk about that just when I finish the tips, but definitely, Marifa is everywhere. And even in the US, there is Marifa. Don't say that uh, only in Algeria, in all countries, believe me. So, uh, good. So, let's do that. Tips to help you network better. So, meet people through other people. So, what does this mean? Actually, the best and easiest way to meet people people is through referrals, like stick around with the people you already know and who know, you know, the people you are looking to meet, being introduced to them or joining like in their conversations will likely, you know, receive a warm welcome. For example, people, when they know that I work, for example, for a bank and they want to get to know someone working for another bank. So they come to me and they're like, Selma, do you know 
a person who work at this company on this back and I'm like yes let me connect you guys and I just open you know a Facebook chat and I connect them and I leave the chat and here is a connection so when when we don't meet in person so uh, it is really easy to use your current network, your classmates, your family, your neighbors. So this is already a network. So also something that I noticed in Algeria that people do not introduce others. Let me give you an example. When I meet like with a group of people, so I always introduce the person who is with me. I say, hello, this is my friend Ariella. She's from USA and she's here. She's the founder of the American Institute. And they start, you know, talking, we do the connection and I say, this is, you know, Emily, or this is, you know, Adam, so they can get to know each other and they start this small talk. But in Algeria, I noticed when I go, for example, with a group of people and I don't open my mouth and I wait for people to introduce me, they don't like we stay like total perfect strangers even if our two common friends are talking and this is a no-no to do always introduce the people who are with you let's adapt this culture you know to avoid awkwardness and it's always good to expand the network so next slide ariella <clears throat> yes use social media oh my god so we are gifted with social media. I know the pandemic has been hard on all of us. We are not, you know, going out that often. We're not meeting people. You even had your classes uh, on Zoom, maybe on Google Meet, Hangout, wherever. But social media, you know, is the new way of living, a new way of networking. Social media is an effective way to get to know important contacts better without, you know, having this pressure of meeting them face to face um, you may not be prepared to meet with them face to face but an invitation on LinkedIn a connection on LinkedIn will get you connected with that one person that you want to connect with so Twitter Facebook you know try commenting on a link as they posted as Ariela said earlier earlier or responding on a comment they made try to start a conversation with them and offer them you know a value in return so also between brackets we have you know people who have a lot of messages like Ariella said so don't be pushy for example me personally I don't like when people uh, they write me like hi salut ça va ça va ça va you have a million of ça va in one message okay we are here connected but I'm not here to you know you know, talk to you on a daily basis. Ça va, ça va, merci et toi. Yes, if you need something, you want me to help you, I'm here to help you. This is why the connection is made of, so for. Um, so when you have the opportunity to meet them in person, it will be easier, of course. But in order to get to know that person, try to comment, you know, try to follow what they do if they publish an article and the past. So for example, in Algeria, I noticed that people are more into Facebook. Well, nowadays I know you're in, into Instagram, Snapchat, but I'm talking about, you know, the days where, you know, acquaintances, come and add you on Facebook. For me, Facebook was just for friends and family. And then I understood that in Algeria, you have to accept these acquaintances, people from the professional world come and add you. So this will get you, you know, together, get you closer in the community and will give you a chance to know these people better because you are there in their world. world. But for me, LinkedIn is definitely the best tool for networking in a professional, you know, site. So this is for social media. Ariella, next. Yes, do not ask for a job. Oh my God, never, never ask for a job. So a lot of people, you know, when they see you, like last time I was in a taxi and he was like hearing me speaking and just I finished the conversation on the phone and he told me, you work in a company, right? 
And I said, yeah, sure. He said, you know, my wife is looking for a job. And I told him, ah, really, how can I help her? What degree does she have? And then he was like, she doesn't have a degree, but she wants to work for a company. And then I was like, does she have experience? Does she have skills? And he said, no. So I was like, how can I help this guy? So I gave him my email and I told him to send her CV. And he said, okay. But um, so people, you know, they don't even ask what you do, but they ask you for a job. So don't do that right away. At least he could, you know, have a small talk with me, try to understand so I could maybe offer something to his wife. But to be pushy just like that and jump, hey, you work at a company. Can you find a job for my wife? I was like, fine. I know a lot of people are trying. I try to help, but I couldn't. Anyway, so never ask for a job. Networking is not asking everyone you know for a job. In fact, when you network, you should, you know, ask people for information that uh, will assist you in your job search. You may, you know, network um, to build a relationship, to establish a rapport. So when a potential opportunity may arise in the future, you con your contact will be, you know, a reference for you. So never ask for jobs. So, but I have a trick for you. Ariella, next slide, please. Yes, so I told you never ask for a job, but there is an easy, you know, yet highly effective way to network during a job search. For example, you can ask um, the person who you established a relationship with or a networking with to review your resume. For example, I know that Ariella is very good. She's a teacher. She, you know, has a background in training in reviewing resumes. So I would be like, hey, Ariella, I have my resume set. Would you like to you know review it for me when you have time i'm not asking for it tomorrow but when you have time please and ariella of course would say yes yeah, sure i would give you feedback to improve it so using this technique is valuable you know for a number of reasons first of all when that person will review your resume they will you know discover your work history they will discover your previous titles they will see another side of you your objectives and many things they they may not know about you. So when they see that, maybe something will come to their mind. Ah, you have a background in law. You know, my friend or someone I know has a firm in law. I should introduce you guys. So maybe the background, your background will be suited for a position or a job. So try to be smart, you know, don't be pushy, but try to be smart with the people you make a relationship with. Uh, next slide, Ariella. <clears throat> yes, don't take too much time. I know I'm talking a lot, <laughs> but uh, okay, great. So don't take too much time. I mean, time is money, okay, guys? And people are never happy with someone that, that takes up too much time of their time. For example, sometimes I'm in an event, let's say I'm an event, I have my business card. Okay, guys, even if you're students, try to get a small business card with you that have your personal email, but avoid emails like Mimina, Captain, Batman, Superman. This is a no-no in a business card. Okay, selma.muluj at gmail.com and your you know, number, you can write a student in marketing, student in in architecture or a freshly graduate student in this field even if you do not have experience you can have a business card with you it's always nice you know to take a business card out of you, your wallet and give it to people so it shows your professionalism and how you know it gives some vibes anyways so sometimes in events people come and they tell you know endless stories and they keep you up for an hour so if you're friends that's fine but if you don't know the person try to be brief so where whether you are at an event or having a meeting you know try to think about the bullet points what should what should i say so you will see later the elevator speech with ariella and these are you know bullet points that you're gonna tell them to the person with you to attract attention be brief and you know network um, yeah, and you can, you know, establish your professionalism, gain credibility, credibility and cover the topics that you wanted to elaborate at first. Next slide, Ariella. 
yes, listen to the other person. Listening is very, very important because when you are at a networking event, sometimes we want only to talk about ourselves. It's good. But um, the key to being a good conversationalist is being a good listener. So if you have asked another person for advice or their opinion, make sure they have also an opportunity to offer it and tell you. Or, or perhaps you're looking for, for you to add to their a value to their work. So if you do all the taking, the person may feel you're uninterested in them. So maybe you can ask them down some questions to show that you're interested in them. For example, you ask them, how long have you been with this company for people who work? Or how long have you been in this field? Or for example, uh, what do you like or what do you dislike about your job? What is the culture of your company? If you're, you know, try to be curious because people like, you know, to talk also about themselves. It's not only about you. So we said not only a taker, but also a giver. And I think listening to each other can build a really good, you know, a strong relationship. Next, Ariella. Okay, yes, share your success story and your achievement. Yes, I think Ariella is just tired. I feel you're lying. I feel like you're lying to yourself. I'm not lying to myself. Come on, I, we can, you can, uh, you, you know, you can open your mic later and ask me. We will talk. Okay, so uh, present a success story or achievement. So, for example, you're at a networking event. You're talking a, to a person. You, you can, you know, um, talk about your achievement, what you have done. Um, you know, even if you're a student, you can tell them about the project that you have created. You can tell them about the marks that you had, you know, start telling them about a problem that you solved. And then the solution includes a lot of information on how, you know, this disastrous the situation is, and then how it became happy at the end because you were, um, you were able to solve the issue. So like telling a success story or achievement is always attractive and catchy and will make the person you just met remember you from that one thing because sometimes we meet different people and we can't remember something about them we can't even remember the name but a catchy story will always be there so if they don't remember the name you they'll be like ah you're the person who won this who did that and that right and yeah next slide and here comes my second point, follow up. So I just met Ariella and we had, you know, a great talk and we exchanged, you know, maybe phone numbers or business cards. So I usually exchange business cards when I have, you know, a meaningful conversation with someone. I just don't go to an event and distribute all my cards. No, that's a no, no. So you need to have at least a meaningful conversation. And when you go to a place, you know, go with that mindset of making a new friend try to be sincere and honest when you talk to these people because networking is just not like a cold networking you have to be warm you know these are people you're talking to and you're trying to make it a real connection so what i always do when i meet someone and i have a meaningful conversation with them so i always email them or send them a message on whatsapp and i say hello it was really nice meeting you um you know, the topic that we talked about, it was an interesting conversation. So try to have a follow-up, create a reason to keep the relationship going. This doesn't mean that you have to say, hello, bonjour, ça va, good morning every day. No, try to be, you know, professional. For example, if you read an article that is related to their field and you think of them, you can share it with them. And maybe you can, you know, try to find at least a way, two or three opportunities yearly to reconnect with the members of your network if they don't live here you can you know always text a nice message during christmas or during their birthday you know to keep always in touch because it's important so following up with people is important next slide and the last one i guess how to find a job <laughs> yeah you're very useful thank you next one ariella <clears throat> yes be polite and always say thank you. So uh, being polite and nice with people 
is always a good thing. You can't just go to people, you know, and be like, hi, and like show no interest, show no, you know, politeness, no kindness. This is a no, no. You have to be kind, smiling, um, honest. You have to show your, you know, standards as a human being. This is very important for me because when people are rude, I wouldn't like to, you know, have even a relationship or discussion with them. Next one. Yes, that's my favorite thing. Online presence, very, very important. So ensure your online profile is always up to date. Okay, so someone asked in the chat how to find a job. Actually, recruiters can find you through your social media. Recruiters can come to you if you have an interesting profile. Okay, guys, so you need to put this in mind. So try to keep your profile up to date. Um, you know, uh, check your, you know, update your skills, your experiences. Be careful about what you post also on social media because if a recruiter will type your name and find, you know, some not good post will eliminate you directly. So always try to keep your social media clean. And that's why I encourage people to use LinkedIn because it's a professional network. Use your real name. You're not obliged to put your picture. I know that not a lot of people are comfortable with that, but at least your full name and also your experiences because it can attract talent heads who will offer you a job it happened to me people reach out to me and offer jobs on linkedin for the people who say it doesn't exist it exists so these are few basic rules that will help you succeed at networking remember that the goal of networking is to build relationships and network so a good reliable network can result in new customers okay in partners and community so there and meet people and but ensure that you are following these networks to make sure you're meeting people in the right way and don't be shy to approach people okay so Ariella will teach you how to do an elevator speech you can practice and just go out to the world and you will have plenty of opportunities so that's it for today if you have any questions please let me know we can have maybe two three minutes to discuss and then I'll give it back to Ariella you're welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Um, and you can find I'm me on LinkedIn, to... guys. <laughs> if you need any Sounds help, if you want some networking, exactly. So you can mm -hmm. find me on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Salma. You're I welcome. To... My pleasure. I want to say something that I think all of these tips, all of this advice, at the end of the day, sometimes you have to put yourself in the shoes of the person on the other side. They just want to have a pleasant experience. They want to have a nice conversation. So whereas you might be having the strategy of how to do that, how do I get them to remember me? Don't forget that it's just like meeting anyone. Exactly what Selma said, being polite, asking them about themselves, keeping it a regular conversation, not peppering them with information. We can get lost in our goal and we forget that in that exact moment, we're just trying to have a pleasant interaction. So I completely agree with everything Selma said. Amazing. Thank you, my So dear. Selma and I are both gonna sit on, I think, for these questions. It's not the end of our presentation. After this, we'll try to do some um, elevator speeches, but we wanted to give you guys maybe about 10 minutes to ask us questions. If you have any questions about networking for me, for Selma, for both of us, please do the raise hand button. And Emily will call on someone to come on the microphone and talk to us. Okay, first up to ask a question is Anise. Hi, Anise, welcome. Hi. Hello. He Hello, Anise, do you have a question for us? Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, 
We hear you. Yes. How are we doing? It's my first oh, time. Very well, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's my first time here. It's a pleasure to well, listen to you. Welcome. Hello. Anise, you have a question I about networking. I can't hear you. I think you can't hear us. Okay. Well, thanks, Anise. We're going to move on, though. Okay, how about Fadi? Uh, hey, thank you, though. Yeah, I hope you can hear me. Uh, we can hear you. Hi, Fadi. Welcome. All right, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's really a pleasure. Uh, this is gonna sound weird a little bit since uh, I've missed like most of the things you were mentioning about, you know, networking. I apologize for that. That's uh, that's quite irresponsible for me. But who is it? Simple as that. The only thing I wanted to know about the whole networking thing is, uh, I mean, is it like some sort of, I don't know, like a, a process you do when you're talking to somebody like someone you want to get a job from or something like, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like a conversation process, if you get me. Um, sure. It's, uh, it's, it's building relationships and talking to people, basically. Yeah. It can be virtual exactly. or in person, but that's networking and it's in a professional setting. So you share your professional goals. In a professional way, or can I like uh, go a little bit like, no, I don't want to say informal, but can I use like something to build like a connection with the other part I'm talking to, like uh, building some kind of connection, some kind of relationship. Well, I'm just going to keep it like professional, like speaking in professional terms and all. Why should I get like emotions in it, if you get me? Um, maybe I, think, I can take that. I think, yes, yeah, Selma, jump in. Thank you, Ariella. So uh, thank you, Fadi, for this question. But uh, from what I understood that you are looking for a job and you want to connect with this person and you're wondering if you should keep it professional and use, you know, informal side with this person. Yeah, so exactly. My, yeah. 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 So my advice as a professional and who work in the corporate world, don't go, you know, personal. Keep it always professional. If you want to use close to that person that in the presentation, connect to them into LinkedIn, see what they are commenting, try to enter in conversation with them that professional you know world but you know sending informal sure. messages like hi hello what are you doing today what are you gonna eat this is a no-no people don't like that especially in the corporate world yeah. so um yeah, yeah, try definitely. to you know get to connect with that person and establish a professional relationship can i jump right. to these question as well Yes, um, go ahead. Hi, guys, I'm Emily Please, from the American Cultural Center, Algiers. So mm -hmm. I think that maybe Fadi was asking, uh, he's not maybe being unprofessional. But Can just I make it clear? Can I just make it clear for one second? I apologize for interrupting you. Like, I really apologize. Can I just like make the whole idea clear so you can give me like, uh, so it can give me like a clear response and we can all get like a certified answer. I, I, we don't have that much time, but I, I feel like I mean, know what you're saying. Sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize. Please go on. Please go on. We're asking sure. if you can say something personal to someone. And I just wanted to share yeah. actually something that just happened last night. I was introduced to a woman and kind of a, with coworkers, but in a social setting. And she was introduced to me as someone who runs a huge book club um, with lots of people, lots of Algerians. She runs this massive book club. That's interesting to me because I work at the American Cultural Center Algiers. We do things like that. We might have book clubs. But in the course of the conversation, I also learned that she's a big cook. We both like to cook and we spent the rest of the night talking about recipes, more or less. So I think that was an example of kind of a professional connection. Perhaps I would ask her sometime if she wants to lead a book club for the U.S. Embassy. Um, but yeah. we also on a personal level with some other interest that we had. So I think there can be a professional way to do it, but that still feels very friendly. Exactly. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. This is exactly what I was talking about. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your question. Thanks, Fadi. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Nope.
Okay, I'm selecting someone else here. How about Sarah? Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Welcome. Great, alhamdulillah. Thank you for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity. So I have a question for uh, Selma. Uh, so I'm a networker and uh, just yesterday uh, I have, uh, I had uh, a person that I was uh, giving her information about my uh, uh, my opportunity for her at the beginning I said we we should make uh, a zoom call to be more professional and I can explain uh, easily and uh, in a good way uh, she said no and after that uh, after I explained everything and uh, we spoke uh, in English uh, by texting of course uh, she said that uh, you were not professional and you have not to uh, to talk to someone by itself and uh, uh, no, this is not a perfect how she said I don't remember the word uh, it, it means that she said that I wasn't professional at all but uh, I did my best. I told her that professionalism was never by text. And was I wrong or uh, she was wrong? I I couldn't uh, know uh, what to do in in that case. Okay, I'm so sorry you you went through this experience. Um, Raunak, that's your, your name? Yes, Raunak. Raunak, Raunak, sorry Raunak. Uh, I'm so sorry you, you went through this experience, but I just want to tell you something. I don't know if this opportunity was work related and if you were, you, you know, texted by message, but I think it's not your fault. You're, you know, an applicant, you're a candidate. It's the hiring manager or the recruiter who should be you know, professional, they should send you emails, they should make the calls, they should take the initiative to do the Zoom calls and not you, it's not up to you. And she cannot tell you you're not professional if she accepted to message you to message with you through text. So don't feel guilty and tell yourself that, Alhamdulillah, thanks God, I will have a better opportunity. You don't have to work with people like that. So, so guys, don't be, you know, catfished try to be you know to have high standards and keep it this way okay so as we say inshallah you'll get a better opportunity with more professional people so it's not your fault yes, not at thank all you. thank you you're so welcome. much you're welcome Raunak. okay so that was Raunak, but let's try sarah this time uh sarah here you go Hello. Hi, Sarah. Welcome. Hi. Welcome, everybody. I'm not going to waste your time, so uh, I'm going. I'm going to uh, direct the question. So um, I've been always in a, a good networker. So um, the problem with, was uh, when I tell them, uh, like the recruiters, when I tell them that I really need this job and I'm interested in that kind of job. Uh, and they asked me about my um, uh, work experience, then uh, I don't really have nothing to say about this because nobody actually gives me the chance to uh, work. So I could not build that much of work experience. So they just, uh, when they heard about uh, uh, that, I, that I don't have work experience, they just uh, dropped the chance of giving me this opportunity opportunity particular job so I don't know what's the the problem in this case and I really want to know how how things work in the networking uh, thing thank you Sarah thank you for the question um, I'll start and then I'm sure Salma can add to it I'll just say that we get this question a lot because a lot of people working on their business English and their business skills are just entering the job market they're looking for their first job 
I actually think networking is one of the areas that has an advantage for you if you haven't worked before, because you're not just a resume or a piece of paper. It's you entirely yourself. You have a chance to get to know them and to explain who you are. I think that so many hiring managers, they just want to know they're hiring someone normal, someone sane. When they look at your job, they say, oh, they had three jobs before. It means they're normal. It means they're sane. So show them in a conversation that I'm personable, that I'm not crazy, that I'm not, um, I, I understand social cues. If you engage with them warmly, that will go very far. And then come up with some answers. When they ask you, do you have work experience? Be prepared for the question. No, I don't have work experience. However, I'm extremely responsible. I support my family. I work in this way. I joined this club. You know, that's a preparation question. Whenever we're looking for our first jobs, be prepared to explain your qualities without being able to rely on your work experience. But I recommend that you lean heavily into networking. You try to network even more because that's going to be an advantage to someone who doesn't have as strong of a CV. And Selma, please yeah. jump in here. What did I miss? No, no, I second what Ariella said. When you were talking, actually, I was pasting a link for Sarah. So Sarah, I have a job opportunity for you. Not, so it's a training opportunity that will allow you to, give a job, to get a job with a multinational company. I just yeah, pasted the you. link. Please apply. It's for fresh graduate. And they are not looking for your work experience, but they are looking for your you know, skills as a person, what you have done at the yeah. university, if you had volunteering experience, clubs if you are active in the society so use this in your interview and good luck thank you so much samada this You're is welcome thank you so i'm based in the link check it out okay it's thank called you so young Thanks, professional Sarah. program you're welcome okay that's networking right um, do we want do we want to call on someone else ariel no let's go i think we won't have time for elevator speeches the practice session but let's just talk about it so everyone knows what they are. And then we can go back to Q&A if people still have questions. Because I think we have more people with questions. What do you think? Sounds good. All right, cool. So you guys, we just have about a little under 15 minutes left. Today's session was called Networking and Elevator Speeches. Elevator speeches are really uh, part of networking. All right, this is here a picture of two people. They're meeting outside an elevator. They're about to get inside the elevator. So they have approximately 30 to 60 seconds together. What will they do with those 30 to 60 seconds? This is the concept of the elevator speech. When you have a short amount of time to introduce yourself, how do you do it in a way that is smart, strategic, and clear? This is a key part of networking that exists outside of elevators. Like Selma's describing, when you're at an event and you meet someone and they say, oh, who are you? You want an answer to that question. That's not five minutes long, 10 minutes long, or it's not too short. If I just say, I'm Ariella, and I walk away, they don't know anything about me. We want to have something prepared that describes who we are, what we do, and what we want to do, especially if you're looking for a job. So an elevator speech is a prepared or practiced um, introduction or presentation of ourselves. All right, when do we use an elevator speech? This is what I just said. We use this anytime we meet someone new in a networking situation. So I've had experiences, I'm sure Selma has, Emily has, like Emily is describing, you're at a social event, you're relaxed, you're talking, you're sitting. Someone says, what do you do? Oh, actually, and boom, I'm gonna give you my elevator speech because you've asked me what I do and I will tell you, this is what I do and this is what I'm leading towards. Now, what do you do? And you give them the opportunity to give their elevator speech. I'm making it sound really robotic, like you memorize it and you recite it. That's not what this is. However, it is practiced. It's something so that you can describe yourself in a short amount of time. It's not as easy as it sounds. It takes a while to um, find the perfect phrase or the right adjectives. 
so that we can do it quickly. Um, but it doesn't need to be robotic. It can feel very natural in the flow of conversation. So that goes to my next point. How do we get good at giving elevator speeches? Practice, practice, practice. Do it with your mom, do it with your dad, talk to your sister, call your friend. I know I learned how to give my elevator speech in my first two years of working as an intern and then in my first job. It's very useful to have a few different versions. So imagine you're meeting um, the president of a corporation. It may be different from if you're meeting someone who has the same level of job as you. Maybe you share different details. Or maybe you're someone with a diverse background, um, like Selma. Maybe you have banking and biology. So you have two versions. If you meet someone in biology, you explain a little bit differently than if you meet someone in banking. It's useful to have a couple of different elevator speeches to bring. So here are some examples so that you know what I mean when I say speech. It's very short. Number one, this is just a random example, just um, not a real person. <laughs> I create, so I, okay, so here's the setting. Um, I'm at lunch, my friend arrives, they introduce me to their friend, he tells me, what do you do? I say, I create illustrations for websites and brands. My passion is coming up with creative ways to express a message and drawing illustrations that people share on social media. That's it. And then I can return, what do you do? So it's still a conversation. There's no pause, there's no big moment where I have the microphone, I'm talking about myself. It's short, it's clear, it's an introduction. Here's another one with someone who's looking for a job. I recently graduated from college with a degree in communications. I worked on the college newspaper as a reporter and eventually as the editor of the art section. I'm looking for a job that will put my skills as a journalist to work. This one's a little more explicit. This is the type that I would use when I'm actually talking to someone in the field I'm trying to enter. I let them know openly, I'm currently searching for work. I don't say, do you have a job? Can you hire me? No, I simply say, this is my background and I'm looking for a job in this field. And then I turn the question to them, and what do you do? Okay, so this is part of a conversation. All right, so we wanted to do people's elevator speeches, but I don't think we have enough time. So I was thinking we could do either, Emily could do hers, I could do mine, or I mean, we could see if people want to do theirs. I'm just worried we'd run out of time. Emily and Selma, how do you feel? Do you want to open it to the audience? Do you want to give yours? What's the mood? Uh, Ariel, I think you should give your elevator speech <laughs> and then and then maybe sure. in with a couple Q and A's, just at some random. Okay. Point. But I'd like to hear your elevator speech. Okay, awesome. Pressure is on. Okay. I'm uh, giving my scenario, which you don't have to do, but I like to picture a scenario. Let's say I'm, um, I'm in a printing shop in Algiers. I'm photocopying because I'm doing some bureaucratic work and someone else comes in to photocopy. Then we start a conversation and they say to me, um, oh, so what do you do? I'd say, hi, I'm Ariella. I'm an American. I'm an American English teacher living in Algeria, and I opened my own English school here called the American Institute. We have language classes and cultural activities all about interacting with the English speaking world. What do you do? Okay, so it's my background. It's what I'm working on. It's describing my company. That's my elevator speech. Tell me guys any feedback. I accept feedback. <laughs> Can I say, Ariella, that I think that it was an important point that you ended with, what do you do? So you had a random conversation with someone and you did tell about yourself, but you also asked them, what do you do? It showed a lot of curiosity and made a conversation rather than a one-way speech. Absolutely. I think um, we should have someone do an elevator speech who maybe doesn't have a job yet. Or yeah. maybe Amel Lalmi. She said, "Jobless person can't make an elevator speech." Yes, you can, Amel. <laughs> we can help you. <laughs> Selma, go ahead. What would that sound like if you had to imagine yourself before you had a job? What do you think you could say? Well, okay. Let me imagine Selma, the student. 
Hi, mm -hmm. my name is Selma Mouloud and I have a master's degree in biology. I graduated two months ago and I'm now looking for a job. And I'm a very passionate person, you know, about nature and life. And what about you? What do you do? I don't know. <laughs> Just something like that. Simple. No, beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, it's funny. We give these talks as if it's like a hard science or it's very technical. But really, guys, it's just about making sure that you present yourself as a professional. And that's it. And being funny and sweet and nice. And again, it's a conversation. So you say, hi, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm looking for. You know, and Salma comes across as her very um, engaging, sweet self. I don't have a job yet, but I'm looking. And this is the field I want to work in. What about you? It doesn't have to be this like, you know, every second matters. And in fact, that's kind of a turnoff when people are uh, too practiced or they come on too strong. You want it to feel very natural. I think we only have like five minutes. Okay, let's say we have four minutes left because I need to do my idiom. I think we should have some people do elevator speeches. I'm kind of curious. Is anyone brave? Anyone brave out there want to try an elevator speech? Raise your hand. Emily's going to nominate maybe three people. I think we probably only have time for three. And remember, guys, these are short. These are very short. Okay, we have, let's see, Nesreen. Elevator speech, here we go. Hello? Well, uh, I'm the same- Hi, Nesreen, welcome. Hi, thank and you. Who, and we're meeting in the elevator, Nesreen. I'm gonna say, Nesreen, hello, nice to meet you. Hi, well, <laughs> I'm shaking your hand, not right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Simba. Rahman, uh, an electronics and nice education. I enjoy volunteering a lot. So I, I joined uh, an orga organization, <laughs> an organization in uh, teaching kids uh, robotics and uh, new technologies. So I gathered between volunteering, technology, and my field in, of studies. Uh, I want to upgrade my skills in uh, practical. Uh, yeah, so I, I want to I want to have uh, more hands on in uh, in more robotics and technologies. <clears throat> uh, I would be great. I would have a great deal for it if I can join your company as a, as an intern student. Yeah, thank. Thanks, Nesreen. Okay. So my first feedback is I love that you seemed excited and you had a lot of detail. And I, I think I really clearly understood what you were working on. My second feedback is, you asked me for an internship. I don't want you to ask me for an internship. Not now. Not in the first time. All Save right. it. Wait until we have the conversation. Introduce it later. Introduce it on LinkedIn. Give us a moment to create the dynamic. And mm -hmm. then you can say, I'd love to intern with you. And there's very, it's a very silly difference. If you say, I'm looking for a intern, or sorry, an internship, okay. But if you tell me, I want to intern with you, that's different. Now I feel pressure. So leave it open. You can still share that you're looking for an internship. Just don't tell me it's with me because suddenly it changes our dynamic. All right, All right. tell me any advice. But great job, Nesreen. Thank you. No, great job, Nesreen. Yes, ah, oh, sorry. You said something? Yeah, I want to hear your feedback. <laughs> no, no, very good. You are a little bit shy, so you should be more confident next time and try, you know, yeah. to get, you know, bullet points. So confidence is very important when someone speaks because people tend to be attractive. But overall, very good. You mentioned all the bullet points that needed to be addressed and Ariella gave all the fee amazing feedback. Thank you so much, Nisreen, and good luck. Thank you. I do have a question, please. Yes, sure. If uh, Emily allows. 
Yeah, I recently <laughs> meet uh, I recently meet uh, a good network uh, for a short time, uh, and he's an expert in my field. Uh, I took his number. I didn't mention that I want an internship. So how can I start? Uh, how can I call? How can I reach him back to to uh, ask him for uh, an internship or uh, a job later? Did you try to find him on WhatsApp? This is what I usually do with numbers because on WhatsApp is easier. Did you try? All right, no, I didn't. So I yeah. I, so I would... so tr so try to see if he's available on WhatsApp. You can you send the follow up message. Hello, this is Nasreen. We met at this and that, and you know, small talk. And then you say, um, you know, I'm looking for this opportunity. So if you may, you might know someone, or if you you want to, you know, review my resume to give me your feedback because we're in the same field. So he will do that the next step. So, but right. don't be pushy. Okay, try to find him. Yeah. All right. Thank Good you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Emily, I'm afraid we only had time for one in the end. I'm sorry to everyone who was on deck. But no thank problem. you, Nesreen, for the save with Nesreen the brave person. <laughs> um, but everyone, I encourage you to share your elevator speeches. Maybe that would be fun homework. If you want to tag your tag myself, tag Selma, tag the embassy, put your elevator speech on Instagram. And I would happily, happily, happily give you feedback. Your, the only thing is your story has to be public so we can see it. And then we can give you feedback on what you're doing. I'm not even gonna share my idiom this week because I like this for homework better. So share your elevator speech. I will repost it and I will put some feedback on it about what you did great and you should keep, what you can improve on. And Selma and the embassy might do the same. I think it could be really fun. So, Let's say a huge thank you to Selma for joining us. Selma, our panelist, coming thank in. This you. is our first guest speaker. It's We're my so happy to honor. Have you. Thank you so much, Ariella. It's my pure pleasure and honor. Thank you so much for having me and giving me the chance to meet all of these amazing people. Thank you, Ariella and Emily and everyone. Keep it, Kira, keep up the good work. All right, you guys, thanks for joining. And maybe in our extra session that we don't have a topic for, we can make it all about elevator speeches and have so much more practice. But everyone, you did great today. And I love that people are exchanging information in the chat. This is networking. We're doing Yay! it. <laughs> all right, next week, we're talking business etiquette and politeness next Tuesday at 8 p.m. See you guys then. See you. Good night. All right. Bye, everyone. See you.